OK. Um, je vais faire ma présentation en, en anglais. Euh, si vous avez des questions aussi en français, par la suite, euh, gênez-vous pas. OK. So, so, this talk is about Home Assistant. Home Assistant is a hub that allows you to automate devices in your home. I've already spent uh, a couple of weekends playing with uh, my own home assistant setup. Um, before that, I was disappointed, with, disappointed by the basic features of if this then that. I was also concerned with cloud services that need access to devices in your home. So home assistant, it runs in your house. It often runs on a low cost computer like, uh, like a Raspberry Pi. And out of the box, uh, it controls devices like Philips, Philips Hue highlights, uh, various media players, they will be automatically detected and they can be controlled, all of them can be controlled by Home Assistant. So it can replace uh, platforms like SmartThings, Alexa, um, HomeKit, Google Assistant, all of those. It can also integrate with those platforms and, it, um, and if you already use them, they, they can be used in Home Assistant. So they, It connects to all of those platforms at the same time, so you finally get a way to have all your devices in your home to talk to each other and work to each other. So what I like most about Home Assistant is it's an extensible platform, so we can write our own components. Um, home Assistant is a platform that automates devices in your home. It tracks the state of those devices and changes in state trigger events. When a light is turned on, it will trigger an event. When the room temperature is raising by one degree, it will trigger an event. Someone coming back home and connecting to Wi-Fi will trigger another kind of event. So based on events, Home Assistant allows you to define advanced rules to control those devices. When an event occurs, you can specify which, 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 action, which action to perform. For example, When I get home, I want the lights to turn on. Um, you can also set conditions for events to trigger actions. If I, use the, if, I, if I use the same example of lights turning on, I don't want anything to happen unless it's dark. I could also not want the lights to turn on themselves if there's already someone in the house. Um, so for each trigger, you can define conditions. Um, the names you see on the slides Device, device tracker, dot fill, light, living room lamp, are names of what are called entities. So, to give you some perspective of how Home Assistant looks, um, here's a screenshot of a responsive web application it provides. Um, the web views can be customized by editing a configuration file. Um, for example, this is exactly the set home, setup I have at home. So, Even if you don't automate anything, you still, net a, you still get a nice dashboard with all your devices and uh, different services. Okay. Under the hood, Home Assistant is a pure Python package. It uses, <laughs> it uses new features from Python 3.5, such as uh, Async IO and Type Hints. Yes. <laughs> You can download an image for a Raspberry Pi um, ca called uh, HAISS.io, and it will set up for you that Raspberry Pi as a small appliance. Cool. So we'll skip all the basics, jump directly to advanced topics, and uh, this is because Home Assistant can be extended by creating components. Um, This way, you can add new types of devices. Well, Home Assistant already supports hundreds of devices, but that's not going to stop us just writing another one. So I'll show you how it's possible to create and integrate a custom component. All the code will be on GitHub, so you can come back to it later at your uh, own time and pace. So one type of device is a sensor. Um, the state of those devices is continuously updated, so by some measurements or ex external service. Sensors can be switches, security cameras, weather services, and so on. 
As you can imagine, the definition of a sensor is very open. Uh, it goes well outside of the scope of just home devices. For this talk, I'll use data from the Strava API as a new type of sensor. This API provides, for example, at least stats such as total running distance since the beginning of the year. So here's an example of how it could end up being used. Um, so we have one entity that comes from the Strava platform. Uh, its state is, for example, the distance run by the athlete. So one thing we can do is attach a trigger. So when the entity state changes, that is the total distance of that athlete, we can have some action to be performed. Um, some glorious music. <laughs> so on the right side is an example of what such a trigger would look like. So to create a custom component, uh, we create a new Python module. It's often a single file, and a component will describe a new platform that we want to support and the type of entities that exist under that platform. So near the top, components define their Python package dependencies. Home Assistant will install them when needed. If you have defined uh, pip requirements for a project, this is kind of the same syntax. Our Strava platform has a configuration schema, which is the definition of the format of the configuration information that is required for uh, enabling that platform. Here we specify for that platform that it needs a client ID and a client secret to connect to the Strava API. Um, entities finally represent individual devices. So each instance of uh, devices has, has a unique name and all the information about the state of that device. Okay, many services that provide a web API uh, to access their data will require some form, some form of authentication or authorization process. Uh, this is the case with the Strava API, so we need to add some code to fetch an access token. Um, this token allows an, our component to fetch an athlete's personal data. Hopefully, Home Assistant provides an utility called HTTP and a configurator component. With those, we can create a card on the web dashboard that will set up an HTTP call back handler that will manage the authorization process. So this is a UI thing. Um, if we could put uh, the road side aside for a minute, this is how a typical component setup looks like. So Home Assistant will call setup platform with a configuration, and the component will use that to create entities and add them as devices. So from there, the system is uh, in a closed loop. Home Assistant will call update method on each sensor entity. It's the responsibility of that entity to fetch up up-to-date information. So the simplest way to do this is to rely on a third-party Python package or Python library, um, in this case, uh, Strava Lib. Um, that allows you to uh, use that particular service. For example, yeah, this. Um, <laughs> For the Home Assistant project as a whole, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, they already have to maintain uh, hundreds of different sensor types, um, and the project computers don't want to have to maintain all those hundreds of integrations. So they prefer to have third-party libraries and just have to bump a requirement version number. So, so now that we have our code ready, <laughs> will make it available to Home Assistant. So in the configuration file, we had our new sensor. Here we can see that we use the name of the Python module as a sensor platform. After that, we fill information that is required by our component uh, platform schema. And then the platform schema, this is the thing that we had to define our code. Um, if we're not yet authorized to connect to Strava, we will see a configuration card that let us connect to the API or the account. Otherwise, when that's done, the component will create a device entity that represents an athlete. And this will show up in the UI. So let's just try. Cool. So. For, for the same, this example, we just 
did this, those three steps. Um, our component is alive. We just didn't have run through the whole authorization. So let's see if it works. Uh, not quite. Oh well. Okay. Oh well. In a perfect world, there would be the same card with just the number, which is the number of kilometers that I've run, but it seems that it's a different network than at home. Um, anyway. Um, tune, tune. Um, okay, um, there's a lot of ground I haven't covered in this talk. Uh, I didn't explain in much detail what Home Assistant does, how it works, how you can use it. Um, for that, I highly recommend watching Paulus Schautzen's talk at PyCon. So he goes through uh, he's one of the core developers of uh, Home Assistant. He gave a talk at PyCon 2016, and he goes through the, the design of the platform, so I highly recommend. Um, the whole Home Assistant documentation itself is excellent. However, I still struggle with the configuration for the triggers. So um, probably in the following weeks, um, I'll spend time discontracting the different automations and trigger I have at home and write some kind of cookbook that everyone, anyone could look into to uh, maybe get the basics right. Um, finally, the code that I use for this demo, uh, it, it works. <laughs> so uh, I'll put it on GitHub too. Uh, there's also some custom components I wrote for myself that will be there. So uh, and if anyone wants to give a little help, uh, it could even end up being integrated into Home Assistant itself. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so if anyone has some questions, questions please. Ooh, des questions. <laughs> oui. Uh, well, first of all, really looking forward to uh, to do uh, different projects. Mm -hmm. Can you give us just a few ideas of what you accomplish with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the question was roughly, what can I accomplish with it? Um, so. E e you can roughly guess on that dashboard, which is exactly the one I have at home, there's a lot of monitoring. And on the center part, there's the people part, which is essentially uh, our mobile phones when we come home and it's detected by Wi-Fi router. So there's nothing about GPS tracking or anything. It's really when the home connects to Wi-Fi. Um, we have autom some automations like turning the lights on, or if it detects movement but there's nobody home, just don't mind about turning the lights on, and, and so on. Um, otherwise, it's mostly buttons. You can trigger actions manually, so we can like turn on all the lights um, or turn off all the lights most often, and uh, otherwise it's weather and monitoring for some solar panels. So you, you have a big, one single overview of all the devices, regardless of the protocol or technology, which is really, really, really cool. Maybe on the system. How many devices? I think the Home Assistant documentation claims 200 something different platforms. So that's a lot of things, yeah. What are advantages to have the home automation not for, say, example, if it's a PTE? Right. Um, kind of roughly, the, the main advantage of using a custom made home assistant setup is that even if you're already using some kind of autom home automation platform, if you have a second one or you just want to be able to customize it, you just put that on top and you replace all your usage of the current apps you're using with that. Uh, it, 
will do all the things you need. And uh, in the end, you just have one single point that it, it's, it's like pseudo superpowers on your home automations. <laughs> cool. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Yeah. Is that voice input at the top right? Or just imagining that? No, it's, it's really voice input. Um, I just didn't put a microphone on my Raspberry Pi, but you you can actually have some voice recognition, yeah. Is it calling up to a like, third party API? It, I, I think, think it is. isn't. Um, there's, there's another, another way, way, which is using the Google Assistant integration, you get Google Home kind of integration into this, it obviously requires some network. Um, yeah, it all works. Yeah, um, maybe I can try to show. Ah, oh, no. Whatever. Um, yeah, uh, Home Assistant will record all the events and the states in, uh, in a database internally, and you can go back in time and look the, like the weather through the day and uh, how, how long your lights are on, whatever. Uh, so you, you get tracking for everything on like extra, which is something that I don't think most platforms offer. <laughs> there was one there in the back. The finances model that I see there, I mean, are you actually trading based on evil on your life? Uh, <laughs> 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 or you are reducing the life and the, the finances go down as a favor? I could. <laughs> could it be possible? I mean, yeah, yeah why not? not? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here, please. What system do you have experience with to control the lights? Like, I know that wave. Exactly. In this case, it's Z. Yeah. In this case, it's Z-Wave. Um, I'm going through a Smart Things hub because this is how we started. So it just calls to uh, the Smart Things platform, and from there, it just it's just a bridge. So uh, essentially, it gets feedback on the lights are on off and can turn them on off. Yeah. Um, maybe something. Uh, is there a mobile app on iPhone or Android for uh, Home Assistant? Oh. This, this is really cool because this is a HTML5 web worker application. So it will run really, really nicely in a, in a web browser. I know in Android you can pull that web page into some kind of app. And uh, so it looks like a native app, but actually it's just HTML5 based. Um, I don't know on, a, on an iPhone, but I guess it would be really, really neat. Service worker doesn't work. Service worker, okay. For, right. For the PWA, for the progressive web app, this is supported by Safari or iOS right now. Oh, no. So okay, so get that back on your phone. Their iOS app is exactly a container for that. Oh, okay, okay. So they created uh, uh, There's, there's a word around. Around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe a last question? <laughs> yep. Um, it looks a little bit weird to have all your passwords in a single file on your Raspberry Pi. Does it support using a script to <clears throat> decrypt all the passwords with the single password mm -hmm. at some point in time? Right. Um, um, I haven't played a lot with uh, the encryption. There is support for storing secrets uh, safely, but for one, for one thing, it's a local device that doesn't have any inbound, um, well, there's no exposed port to the external Ethernet, internet like most of the web automation platforms. So in a way, uh, it's relatively safe for this reason. And uh, another thing is that it's mostly API keys being stored there. So in a way, if something bad happens, I maybe have to revoke permissions or something like that. And doesn't sound too bad. Um, so in a sense, it's not much worse than other 
uh, home automation platforms. And he, I, I know from the documentation, you go, you can go much, much better. Yeah. You, if you want, you can have an encrypted partition and everything. You can go wild. So, well, the, thank you very much.